Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 22, and in this segment we're going to take a look at a sort of a special classification of thunderstorms, which is referred to as a mesoscale convective system, or MCS. And these are sort of their special own category because they're not really single cells, they're not really multi-cells, they're sort of just a big mass of thunderstorms that are uh, that can be very long-lived, so unlike a single cell, uh, unlike a single cell which is typically short-lived, and unlike a multi-cell, uh, which uh, doesn't really uh, it, it doesn't really have a, it doesn't really have individual cells. It's just one big mass of thunderstorms that's present in the atmosphere. So that's one of the more common descriptions that you'll see. It's either just a big mass of thunderstorms or a large complex of thunderstorms that's basically considered just a single entity, unlike a multi-cell, which you can sort of consider as being uh, multiple different thunderstorms at various stages in the typical life cycle of a thunderstorm. But uh, mesoscale convective systems are just these, basically just a big mass of thunderstorms. And we see these quite often over the plains. Uh, this is usually what you'll see after, say, a tornado event of some kind or some sort of severe weather event. Eventually, uh, all the thunderstorms will just uh, combine together into a large mass of thunderstorms. And then uh, those thunderstorms will just go on their merry way. Uh, sometimes, uh, excuse me, sometimes you can also get a... Uh, Sometimes uh, squall lines are also classified as MCSs, but uh, typically a, an MCS will be sort of isolated in nature. It will be kind of standing by itself, but it's just a large mass of thunderstorms. And because they're so large, they can produce a large amount of uh, they can produce a large amount of rain. So these can carry a risk for flooding. But these can also produce uh, strong straight line winds, especially uh, in the warm season, uh, where you have a lot more instability and moisture present in the atmosphere. Uh, if you get an MCS forming, you can uh, get potentially a greater threat for straight line winds, especially as you go up north, where there might be some better wind shear present, in the height of summer, that is. Uh, one of the more important things about mesoscale convective systems is these typically produce outflow boundaries, that is, those currents of cold air that travel in the horizontal direction. And as we discussed in a previous lecture, those outflow boundaries can be a very uh, important uh, can play a very important role in the development of severe weather uh, later on in the day. So these are uh, often, uh, usually if you get an outflow boundary in say the spring where you're at the height of severe weather season, usually that outflow boundary is going to come from a mesoscale convective system, which is again that a massive complex of storms. And also what's kind of important about these is a mesoscale convective system can lead to the development of what's referred to as a mesoscale convective vortex or MCV. And we'll actually go ahead and discuss the mechanism behind that. So again, mesoscale convective system is basically just a large collection of thunderstorms. And as you've got the uh, as you've got the warm, moist air going up into the thunderstorm, you've got a lot of condensation occurring in the mid levels. And as that occurs, you're going to have a lot of latent heat release. And again, as we saw in the little hip symmetric equation, if you've got heating occurring, if you're layer, if you've got a layer in the atmosphere that's warming up if it's got a higher temperature, then the spacing between the isobars is going to increase. So with all this latent heat release, the isobars are going to expand. And as the isobars below the late, uh, area of latent heat release expand, they we bring lower pressures down to ground level and we bring higher pressures uh, upward. So we end up with a region of relatively high pressure aloft and a region of uh, relatively low pressure down near the surface. And this is actually the exact same mechanism that hurricanes uh, are formed by. So hurricanes also form by copious amounts of latent heat release in the mid-levels, bringing lower pressures down to the surface and uh, higher pressures uh, above, the, uh, above the thunderstorm activity. The, uh, difference, the main difference, though, is hurricanes, this process is usually much more intense. There's a lot more moisture present in the tropical waters than there is, say, over land. So in the case of a hurricane, there's much more latent heat release occurring in the mid-level, so you get uh, much more rapid uh, formation of a cyclone aloft and much more rapid formation of an anticyclone, or I think I said cyclone aloft, a much more rapid a much more rapid development of a cyclone to the surface and a much more rapid uh, anticyclone forming aloft. And this basically results in sort of a small area of low pressure, sort of like a mini cyclone, if you will. And these can play an important role in the subsequent uh, development of convection as well. And uh, if you sort of think about this as acting like a little cyclone, you can also think of this as being an area where uh, you have also have where you have rising motion, which can trigger new thunderstorm activity. But you've also got an area where you have fairly strong directional wind shear. And if you've got strong directional wind shear, then that can carry a risk for tornadoes. In fact, uh, one notable severe weather event that was driven by a mesoscale convective vortex happened in the uh, towards the end of summer up in Indiana, Ohio, where there's a 
a mesoscale convective system basically tracked across the Great Lakes region and actually led to quite a few tornadoes touching down across Indiana, Ohio. And probably the most notable of the day was one that hit Kokomo, Indiana, which was an EF3 tornado. And uh, it was kind of weird why this tornado got so much attention because uh, this tornado ended up destroying a Starbucks and that ended up being the headline for some strange region. Everyone was so concerned about the Starbucks being destroyed by the tornado. Uh, I'm not sure why that was such a particular concern, but that was basically the headline that uh, everyone saw. And of course, that Starbucks was destroyed in Kokomo, Indiana. But that's going to do it for this segment on mesoscale convective systems and mesoscale convective vortic vortices. And in the next segment, we're going to start talking a little bit more about photographs. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.